I'm the canon for ministries in the Diocese of Milwaukee. So that means I work with uh, congregations that are looking to call a priest. Um, I work with congregations that might be uh, struggling or maybe in need of kind of an outside perspective to maybe talk with them a little bit about the life of their parish. Um, I'm a little bit shepherd to the shepherds. So if a clergy person is needing somebody to talk with or come to for support or, or guidance, I might do some of that. And then occasionally the bishop asks me what I think about something, and, um, and I tell him. <laughs> so, um, currently I'm also part-time rector of St. Thomas of Canterbury in Greendale, but I'm looking at uh, calling somebody to that parish uh, so that I can do the canon work full-time. That was a lengthy introduction, but that's why I'm here. Um, and it's good to be with you. The last time I was at St. John the Divine uh, was the evening that Jason Levon was received as a priest uh, into the Episcopal Church. And uh, it was my honor to preach that night and to, and to be with many of you who were there. Okay, as we prepare to reflect on God's Word this morning, as we prepare to be nourished by the gift of the Eucharist, I'd like to invite us to pause for a moment here at the beginning of our prayer. And let's bring to God our own need for healing, for reconciliation, for forgiveness. And let's take just a moment of quiet as we bring ourselves together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing our prayer, we give praise and glory to God as we say together, Glory praise to God, God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy. And pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the book of Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there was nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, Carry them into your bosom, as a nurse carries a second child, to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. 
If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. We'll say together Psalm 19 in your pamphlet. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the foam. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servants from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our second reading comes from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who's committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, If anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he's not following us. Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. 
Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. Your hand causes you to stumble. Cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into the fires of Gehenna. If your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies. The fire is never quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to raise up for us this morning uh, maybe just uh, a few reflections um, sort of based on the, the first reading from Numbers and, and the first part of this gospel passage that we just heard. Um, that first reading from Numbers, I'm not quite sure if you caught that at the beginning, but basically Moses is telling God, look, this job you've given me to do, to do it's, it's a pain. <laughs> These aren't my people. They're grumbling constantly. They're, they're always complaining. They're whining. Did I bring them about? Did I? Are they my? You know what? If this is the way you want to do things, do me a favor. Just let me die. <laughs> and then God is going to sort of spread God's spirit about, right? Which is what God does. And we have two guys who didn't make it to the meeting. Eldad and Medad. For some reason, they stuck around in camp. They didn't get to the meeting. And God said, you know what? I'm going to put my spirit on them, too. So we have all these people now sort of sharing in the ministry of Moses, including the guys who didn't come to the meeting. And people got upset with Eldad and Medad, and they went and reported them and said, look, they didn't come to the meeting, and yet they're out there prophesying in God's name. And, and Moses said, would that everybody <laughs> would do that and have a share of God's spirit. So again, we see God stretching Moses and the people of, 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 people of Israel to a greater understanding of where and how the presence, the beauty, the strength of God can be found in and among God's people, particularly in those places or situations where we don't look for it necessarily. Right? The same thing happening with the beginning of the Gospel reading today. So people run to Jesus and say, hey, in your name, people are being cured and healed, but they're not part of our group. <laughs> Tell them to quit it. And Jesus says, no. No, because what's beginning to happen is the ministry is beginning to unfold. And then there's kind of this stern review, like, look, whatever it is that might be getting in your way, Jesus uses this very sort of over-the-top language, right? If your hand is troubling you, lock it off pull out your eye, all these things. Jesus isn't obviously advocating for this literally to be the case, but what he's saying is those things that get in our way, if we give them too much power, focus, or energy, if we don't let go of what we need to let go of, then we're going to stumble. We're going to lose picture of the, we're going to lose sight of the bigger picture and of our own dignity and place as God's children and the call and responsibility we have to carry out the mission and the ministry of God. So God's presence, God's spirit, will not be contained. We can't put God in a box. We can't decide where God is or is not going to be or how it is that people are or are not going to somehow get a glimpse of, of the divine and the sacred in their lives and, and begin to share that message by the way they live, by the way they treat others, and therefore further the work of the kingdom of God. A few years ago in Nina, Wisconsin, 
Uh, the community came together to celebrate the funeral of a man named John Steves. Uh, John was, uh, was 83 at the time of his death. He was a World War II veteran. He came back from World War II, got married, and, and became a French and an English teacher in the local high school. And three nights a week, um, this regular guy would go to the Winnebago County Jail and conduct Bible studies faithfully for 66 years. Excuse me, for 35 years. For 35 years, he would conduct these Bible studies. 66 is in my head because the deputies and the, the people at the, at the jail reckoned by the time he was done with 35 years of Bible studies, three nights a week, he probably touched the lives of about 66,000 people. Some of them continued to come to his Bible study after they got out, the one that he led at his local church. And one of them now is continuing to teach the Bible study. Now that John has gone on to a larger life with God in his heavenly kingdom. God's spirit will be manifest where and when God wants to manifest his spirit. In the life of this one ordinary man, all these people, and did he know that a lot of people were going to end up coming back? By the, end, by the time he was done with this thing, he had some people in his Bible study five, six, seven times. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, there you are again. Well, good to see you. <laughs> We're picking up with the Gospel of Matthew, and off they would go, right? But he never lost hope or faith, and believed somehow that that's the job God had given him to do. And so he did it faithfully. I started out as a priest in the Roman Catholic Church. I was ordained for the Archdiocese in Milwaukee in 1993. Uh, and one of the, one of, I, I asked to go when I got ordained to the central city of Milwaukee. I begged Archbishop Whitman, please, please send me to the Central City. I want to go to the Central City. Nobody else wanted to go to the Central City. I thought this thing was kind of a slam dunk. I got the letter from the Archbishop saying, report to Lake Geneva. <laughs> As you may know, Lake Geneva is not so much the Central City. <laughs> but there I was, and I, and, I, and I was so kind of resentful when I got there. And what am I possibly doing here, etc.? Until... I realized that about 10 miles away was the state school for the deaf. And it was an opportunity for me to get to know that community and begin to learn sign language and to share the lives of folks there. And I learned that there are just a ton of first-generation immigrants living in the Lake Geneva area, working in restaurants and golf courses and all kinds of places who are desperate for a sense of ministry and compassion and belonging. And so, once I was able to let go of <laughs> some of that bitterness, resentment, preconceived notions I had, I found myself in a beautiful place with beautiful, faithful people. And there was the presence of God. And that's how it works so often, isn't it? When we're not expecting to find it, suddenly there is grace and beauty and holiness. This past Thursday morning at my parish in Greendale, Sally and Jim, both in their late 70s, stood together in the church with some family and friends and pledged that they were going to love one another for the rest of their lives and make this journey of faith together. Neither one of them expected this or saw this coming. And yet there was God's presence manifest in front of all of us. Later on the very same day, Alan came to see me, 50 years old, he had made the decision to go off of dialysis because he was facing yet another painful, painful surgery, this one involving amputation of his other leg below the knee. He had just a host of medical problems. And he said, I just don't think I can do this anymore. And they recommended hospice for me. And that's the route I'm going to take. And we talked, we prayed, he let me give him a blessing. And in this man who was a self-proclaimed somebody who had no use for religion at all or any of this stuff, as we talked about life and the gift of his life, he just coming back, kept coming back to gratitude and how blessed he felt and how ready he was to be embraced by his parents who were waiting for him in heaven and that he felt ready for this journey. Folks, it was a sacred, sacred moment. And I got the call yesterday that he died. 
We don't quite pray that he or anybody else thought. And I pray that he's resting in peace. But the thing is, once we start to recognize, like we see in these readings today, that everything, everything is holy. Everywhere around us are moments of the sacred and the beauty and the presence of God's grace. It just fits, it's like putting on a new pair of lenses. Huh? And we start to just see things and hopefully ourselves in a different light. So I think that's what I want to lift up for us today. Certainly prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving for this parish community and all the amazing ways God's Spirit is manifest and known in and through you. And by extension, through all the ways that you continue to touch this community around you. Prayers of thanksgiving for all those times in our lives when we did not expect it, when we were not looking for it, and suddenly, boom, there's the presence of grace or holiness or a moment of inspiration or clarity or insight. And let's pray for open hearts that we may be open to the God who continues to shower us with gifts and grace and blessings. Doesn't mean it's all easy. Doesn't mean that it takes away the struggles or the difficulties. But what it does mean is that we don't make this journey alone and that our God continues to be at work in, among, and through us. Amen. 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 Continue with our prayer on page 358 in the prayer book, or I guess maybe it's in the bulletin. <laughs> the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Prayers of the people are form four, either in the Book of Common Prayer on 388 or in your service bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died. 
that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This week at St. John's, we pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, Sandy and Becky, our wardens, Jessica, Phil, Connie, Jim, Deanna, and Pat, our vestry and clerk. We pray for the Episcopal Church. We pray for St. Michael's in Racine. We pray for all the Burlington area churches, for Love, Inc., the Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, the Diocesan Hospitality Center. We pray for those suffering from war, natural disasters, the economic crises of our world. We pray for our enemies. We pray for those in the armed forces, especially those deployed. We pray for Estelle Serena, Randy and Marcy, Mason and Riley Sherwood. We celebrate the birthdays of Jimmy Yanni and Paul Haynes. We celebrate the anniversary of Don and Marion Cook. We pray for those preparing for the birth of a child, for those celebrating the birth of a child, for those preparing for baptism. We offer a blessing for those recently baptized, Michaela Renee Lau, Jensen Gunner, Joseph Bain. We pray for those preparing for marriage. We pray for those who are in need. Eileen, John, Jane, Don and Marion, Marilyn, Betty, Birgit, Mary, Marilyn, Pidge, Ken, Lana, Estelle, Joanne, David, Jimmy, Tommy. We pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those suffering from natural disasters, domestic and foreign violence, and the pandemic and its effects. Let us pray for nations and peoples as they strive to be better and to do better. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your people, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 6 in our order of worship, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. And also with you. Let's wish one another peace of Christ.
and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image, and you call us to new life in Jesus Christ. And so we praise you. We join our voices with angels, archangels, all the company of heaven who forever proclaim this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And so we recall that on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he'd given you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we offer you these gifts, 
Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit that they may be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. John, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let's pray together for the coming of God's kingdom in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let's pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with kindness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, it was my gift and my blessing to uh, pray with you this morning, so I want to thank you for that opportunity. Um, when we're finished here, I'm going to stick around for a little while. If anybody would like to visit or chat, and uh, members of the vestry, it'd be wonderful to check in with you as well if you have a few moments on this beautiful fall morning. Uh, the Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and together let us pray for God's blessing. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ. May God bless all gathered here in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ending. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.